Uh, hello, hello, hello. Today we are two extreme cheapskates revealing our most shocking oh, grocery wow. secrets. Right, mother? All right. Yes, mother is the definition of the extreme cheapskate. Oh, thanks. Is, I, I am the definition of I can be an extreme cheapskate if I, if wanted I want to. to. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why we changed the name of the channel to Living on a Dime to Grow Rich. Because now I don't have to be an extreme cheapskate. So we are going to give you our top 10. We're going to start with 10, but I think we're going to probably end up like with 20, probably 30. Tips for being an extreme cheapskate. And... Tell us as we go along, are we too extreme? <laughs> I know a lot of these ones that we do, people really have major issues with. So I wouldn't be surprised if they said we were too extreme. Number one. Now, people are going to be surprised at this one, but do not buy in bulk. All right, Mike, show us what bulk is. So why do we not want to go and be this person over here where she is getting huge bags of dog food and the next one where they are at Costco pushing the huge cart with the huge thing of enchilada sauce and taco sauce. Why do we not want to be these people? Mom, she always does this to me. Um, I'm supposed to answer the question, huh? <laughs> this is why you should actually, really, as extreme cheapskates, we do not buy in bulk. No. Not really. Not We don't go to Costco. Yeah, we don't go to Sam's. Don't ever buy something once in a great while. We stock but... up, but we don't buy in bulk. Yeah. And there's a difference between stocking up and buying in bulk. So the difference between stocking up is finding things in your ad that are on sale. Like last week, I bought 100 avocados and a hundred pounds of chicken but i did not buy it in bulk yeah i followed the lost leaders on the sales ads and i stocked up that way but i did not go to costco i did not go to sam's what other whatever other warehouse stores you have i don't go to those places and go and buy a hundred pounds of chicken there mm -hmm. and why not mom well to start out with just the the exhaustion of dealing with all these huge bags and cans and that and trying to store them and trying to find a place in your house to store them that in in and of itself is you know you give up you finally get tired it's too much yeah it's just way too much and so that alone i wouldn't go and when you go to these places also you tend to buy way more than if you just got your sales ad going to a regular grocery store yeah. So you, you tend to spend more money. So all these things that are happening is causing you to spend more money because people say, I don't have space in my house, so we need a bigger house. Yep. Or I need a bigger apartment, you know, that type of thing. So Where do then, I store this stuff? Yeah, so then they start looking for a bigger house in order to accommodate these types of things. The other thing is what I find more than anything else is the average person that has four to five members in their family cannot eat all this stuff before it goes bad. Well, I mean, you get a bag of chips this big and even with two teen boys still at home. And when I had three teen boys, well, when I had four teenagers and a kid, we still could not go through this huge bag of chips. It goes stale before you can well, eat yeah. it. Well, yeah. And people will buy these big containers of sour cream. And I'm thinking, and they say, well, we saved money, but then I watched them throw half of it away. Ketchup. Oh, they had these monster bottles of ketchup. When you've got two to four people in the family, that ketchup is going to last you for years. Yeah. And if it's not lasting you for years, you're eating too much, really, yeah. you know. And so you really aren't saving. Even on a smaller scale, with me being by myself, I have to be very careful because like uh, Miracle Whip salad dressing, uh, you can get a smaller container that's uh, cost a little bit less, but if I buy it in the big one, I save like 10, 15 cents sometimes. So do I pay $2 more and get the big one 
to save my 10 or 15 cents or buy the smaller one and save a couple of dollars because I know the big one will probably spoil on me before I get it eaten, yep. you know, that type of thing. So that's why buying in bulk is not always a good thing. You get bugs yep. in the dry products, you know, you can if you're not really careful with storing them in their packages and yep. things like that. All right, guys, and this video is brought to you by our Dining on a Dime Cookbooks Volume 1 and Volume 2 go together. Totally different recipes, but they can be used together. And we have all of these tips in these books. They are 35% off right now, and our ebooks are 50% off, including our gluten free, dairy free Dining on a Dime Cookbook. If you are gluten free, dairy free, this is the book for you. As a matter of fact, we are getting ready to have to make a new order because we are selling out of these so quick. So somebody's telling somebody <laughs> on Facebook and Instagram, thank you for all you guys who are sharing that. All right, number two. It is, oh, this is a big one. You and I eat expired food. Okay, so here Mike has a few pictures to show you guys here. So best if used by means. This is the freshest taste that it will have if you use it by this date. Now, this is a box of cereal, but I have found with cereal, you can easily go 18 months to two years at least minimum past that date. And it is still really, really fresh. I am eating a box now that's a year and a half old yep. and it's, it's perfectly fine. Yep. Now for things like cake mixes and brownie mixes better if used by that is because they have baking powder in these mixes and your baking powder will die basically be after that time. Now I have found with cake mixes and brownie mixes, six months. I really go 18 months. I honestly. was going to say I've but done at least 18 I months. I have had a couple go six months. And the thing but, is, I would at least try it, you know, mm, with the, here's the thing you can just, if you're not sure, all you have to do is add one teaspoon of baking powder before, as you're mixing it in. It's not going to hurt anything. Mm -mm. And then you can be double sure that yeah, it's, it's gonna still going to mm -hmm. get rise and fluffy. Yeah. So the worst that will happen if it's a cake mix is it'll end up more like brownies. Yeah. Than a cake. You're really not going to be still out eat it. Throw yeah. some frosting on it. Your kids will eat it anyway. And if, if people are that picky, crumble it up and use it as ice cream topping. <laughs> that tip is right here, Dining in Nine, <laughs> Volume One. We use that tip for everything: for no bake fudge cookies that don't set, brownies that don't turn out, cake that doesn't turn out right. Smash it up and use it as ice Once cream. Once again, coffee. we tell you how to use your leftovers yeah. and those things that work. We have a whole index yeah. on that. All right, the next one is on the on the expiration dates. No date at all. Now, if there's a no date on your canned good. That is usually a best buy date, but guys, canned goods truly can go 5, 10, 15 years past the date on the can. They really, really yeah. can. I just, before we moved here to Wyoming, I ate some uh, tomatoes that had expired. They'd expired eight years before which means I had bought them at least 10 to probably 12 years before I'd had them 10 to 12 years. They were perfectly fine. And they were tomatoes, acidic canned goods like tomatoes and pineapple usually don't go quite as long, but you're not going to get food poisoning. And, um, <clears throat> the, uh, Used by date, so like here on this one, that means you definitely really should use it by that date. So on this particular pro product, this company says if you don't use it by this date, it looks like it's maybe canned cinnamon rolls or something. I'm not quite sure, but that means that they probably won't rise and they probably won't work. So used by is usually used on canned cinnamon rolls, canned biscuits, biscuits, um, pizza dough, maybe canned pizza doughs, pie crusts, mm -hmm. 
those types of in your refrigerator section. Baked, baked goods in the refrigerator section. Yeah. Um, then used by, or I mean, best buy is, uh, or I mean, sorry, I'm getting all my, my thing. See, they've made this so complicated. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but then sell by is a totally different thing. So that's on your meats and your dairy products usually. Now on meats, you can go three to four days on the sell by date. Dairy, you can go several oh, weeks. Yeah. Cream cheese could go a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Milk can go two weeks, but don't throw out your sour milk. I have a video coming out on 10 uses for sour milk. You can freeze your sour milk and use it for baking. Mm -hmm. So we eat expired food all the time. A lady um, was in the grocery store. One of our viewers emailed and said she was in the grocery store and this guy was hollering about food prices. And she said, well, look here, here's, I don't, it was orange juice or something. I can't remember. She said, here's whatever is, it's, it's on clearance right now. And he said, well, what's wrong with it? She said, well, nothing's wrong with it. They just have to sell it right away because it's going to, the sell by date's gone. He's like, I ain't going to eat expired food. Yeah. Dude, that's why your grocery bill's going up and mine's going down as prices go up. I paid a dollar 25 and a dollar 40 for chicken this week. Boneless skinless chicken. I haven't paid that price in probably, oh my goodness, probably four or five years at least. That's the cheapest. It's been four or five years at least since I paid that price for bolus skinless. So eat that expired food, eat that clearance food, and you are going to start saving you, money. You've got to realize years go i i mean even when i was had been married for a while you didn't have expiration dates mm -hmm. now we did have for the meat you know uh some things but anything else we didn't have you just ate whatever you bought even if it was you know years and years and years so mm -hmm. yeah past all right the next one is <clears throat> you're gonna have to do a little work and boy did i do some work this week oh <laughs> Now, a lot of people put this item in their grocery budget. We do not actually put it in our grocery budget. It is deodorant, but the same principle applies to groceries. So I'm going to use my example for deodorant because it's using coupons. And guess what? I went to the store and they had Axe on clearance for Christmas. And it was a gift box and then it had a coupon for a free Axe deodorant stick, just like this one here. <clears throat> the catch was um, nothing, really. You just had to take the coupon out of the box. But here's what happened. I spent <laughs> an hour <laughs> buying 75 bottles of deodorant, tubes, whatever it's called, of deodorant at the store this week. <laughs> and what I did was I was using the coupon, but the register was not registering it correctly. And frankly, I hate using coupons. I use coupons about three times a year for materials. And now for my deodorant, deodorant is all I've used in the last 18 months, mm -hmm. I think. And so um, here's the point though. I spent, oops, I forgot to get my numbers here. I spent, um, I spent $62 total for all 75 tubs of Axe. And it would have cost me, are you ready? Here, drum roll. $450. So for one hour's worth of work, I saved $388. Mm -hmm. Now, who can say they earned, I don't even earn $388 for an hour, for an hour's worth of work doing videos. Just think about that. And people do not put this in perspective. If you will do a little bit of work, yeah, it was a pain in the rear. Yeah, I was a little stressed out, I'll be honest. Not so much from 
the whole ordeal of it, just having to get in there and just get it done. And I thought I was finished and then I wasn't, and then it kept going on. I was, I was stressed out enough that when I went out to the parking lot, I thought my truck had been stolen <laughs> and I couldn't remember where it parked. And I was getting ready to call the police. But if my truck was there and I called the police because I was so stressed out about it, would it have been worth to save $388? Yeah. Well, and two, you say it was hot, uh, stressful, kind of stressful and a little bit hard, but spending an hour at any job is stressful and hard. It can be stressful and hard. Not all day long, maybe. Nobody but thinks you about have, it. Yeah, but so you got to factor all this in and you think, well, that's just going to be too hard. Well, what, which would you rather do? Work like two days or more at a job that's really stressful and hard or one hour doing something? You know, take and translate this yeah. stuff over to that type of thing. And so. how many people, I mean, let's translate that the other way. If you would pay, okay, so I took my numbers. Oops, I took my numbers off here. Just a second. Let me get it back on here. So, um, <clears throat> so let's go, let's go the other direction. Let's say you pay $6 for a tube of deodorant, which is what it is now. I about had a heart attack when I saw that because we stocked up before the prices went up. You would pay $450. So let's say you make $20 an hour. You actually bring home 15, we'll say, which I think is fairly generous, but we'll say you bring home 15. That's 30 hours of work for the same of amount. Of work for the same amount of deodorant. That I spent one hour working yeah. on it. So you need to totally think these things through. Now, this is sort of off the subject a little bit, but I find a lot of people spending a lot of money on deodorant, shampoos, and stuff like this. And one thing besides saving the way Tara did, another way you can save is try to use less. And I don't mean not use deodorant at all. Yeah. But I got to thinking, why are people using so much deodorant? I mean, I've had the same stick of deodorant for almost two years now, and I, it's only half gone. <clears throat> and I thought, why are people using so much? But I, I think pe what they do is when they put deodorant on, I know this is getting real personal, guys, but, you know, it, you, you rub and rub and rub and rub and rub and rub on each ar <clears throat> armpit. Pit. You know, here you are rubbing... I just do one swipe in the area and it's covered. We found, I found this out when I was doing Mary Kay that most people put lotions and all kinds of stuff like this on way more than what you need to. You just do one swipe and the stuff is on there. You don't need to keep doing over and over. You probably would save four to five times as much yeah. or use four to five times less uh -huh. if you do it that way. And don't be a snob. I'm going to be using the Axe deodorant when my deodorant from our stockpile runs out. Just because it's mint. Do I have to smell you? No, I'm teasing. Yeah, but see, here's the thing. Yeah. I made sure I got a scent that was more neutral. neutral yeah. I know Axe can be annoying. I get that. I have free boys. I get it. But, as a matter of fact, my son, never mind. I won't go there. But... <laughs> We've got lots of stories with the boys. <laughs> but he used it as a weapon. I'll just say that. <laughs> as that bad. Yeah. So, but I got a more neutral scent so that I knew we wouldn't all be obnoxious yeah. out by this scent. Yeah. And I would be able to wear it and that kind of thing. So, well, you know, and another thing is people don't realize I'm ancient of days and years ago, everybody kind of wore the same yeah. deodorant, used they the didn't. same shampoo. As a matter of fact, guys didn't even use shampoo years ago. They just used the bar of soap. But now they have men's shampoo and women's shampoo. And yeah. Kimmy from She's in Her Apron is on here. Hello, my friend. <laughs> I hope you're doing good and surviving the holidays. All right. The next one is dumpster diving. All right. Before we get into our dumpster diving, guys, Dining on a Dime cookbooks are 35% off for our New Year's sale right now. Volume one and volume two, they go together, but they have totally different recipes. Almost all of these tips are in there. And if you are gluten-free, dairy-free right here, this is the cookbook for you. Kimmy, my friend, she's in her apron is on here. She tested these recipes. Kimmy, put the link in there if you want to. Guys, they actually taste good. 
I'm serious. It tastes like real apple pie crisp. It tastes like real sandwich bread. Oops, sorry. So don't forget to check those out. And also our planners, guys, are on sale right now. Our undated 365-page planner. We are almost out. I'm placing another order tomorrow. We, or, These are not on sale. Sorry. These are not on sale because we order them in the U.S. Sorry, I misspoke. But we are almost out. I am placing another order. But if you want, it's almost 400 pages, guys. It's they huge. don't have a date. So if you want one, Undated. it's not too yeah. late to get. So go ahead and get that. And you can just start at the beginning and no wasted pages. Mm -hmm. See, we're thinking about you. All right. The next one is dumpster diving. Now, people are going to say, oh, this is gross. But if you find out when the stores throw away their food and it is legal in your state or city to go dumpster diving for that food, I would go for it. I mean, there are some things that I wouldn't get. Maybe meat, if it's not still cold in the dumpster, <laughs> no, I probably wouldn't yeah. eat meat. Use but your canned use goods. Good judgment, you know, use good judgment. Canned goods bakery items look at the date and see how far out they are if they just threw them away that day and the date is that day they're probably still good look for visible signs of mold it's okay to eat some of this stuff it really is and i know people are like oh that's gross but it can be done all right the next one is food the kids have eaten now what do i mean by that <laughs> If your kid eats a half a pizza, save that or waffle, save that pizza or waffle for later and you eat it for your lunch or your dinner if they're not going to finish it. Mm -hmm. Guys, let me tell you. Stop throwing that food away, you know. Americans throw away probably 50% yeah. of their food. It's been proven. And we've been saying this for ages. It's if, disgusting. Think of this. You spend $600 a month on food. So what happens is you might as well take $300 and put in the trash can if you're throwing food away. Smaller yeah. portions yeah. And, and use that food that they don't eat. Put it in orange juice, milk in a cup. If it's half drank, don't throw it out. Put it in the refrigerator. This is a ridiculous amount of food for kids right here in this picture. This is a perfect example. These kids actually should be sharing one piece of piece, pizza. Yeah, because they're going to eat on that halfway down and not eat anymore. Yeah. And then nobody's going to touch it because it's got bite marks in it and that type of thing. Yeah. And like Kimmy says, you can crisp it up in the toaster oven afterwards. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what Waffles, we do. Waffles, pancakes, all yeah. kinds of things you can warm up, you know. And, yeah. and so, guys... Serious. If you're if you're serious about paying off your debt, you need to stop wasting money, period. And that really means throwing away all of this leftover food. If they have something like oatmeal or cream of wheat, that gets kind of hard, you know, and you think, well, like, I'm just going to toss it. No, you can add some milk to it, mm -hmm. warm it up and stir it up and it'll come out fine. You can also add it to your muffins, mm -hmm. Dining on a Dime, Volume 1. Well, actually, Volume 2 and the variations also. Well, that's another thing. When you're talking about the leftover index, learn how to use some of this food, you know, in other different ways where you don't even know that's mm -hmm. what you're having. Yep. The next one is when you're desperate, you will eat what you can. Now, you guys have heard the story before, but when Mike and I were first married, we did not have a refrigerator when we moved to Idaho. And... We had our stuff outside in a cooler and it had got, we didn't get the lid totally shut all the way. We thought we did. And it was the winter. It was outside in a cooler. We go, I go to cook dinner and I get in there and guess what? A cat had gotten into our round steak and eaten part of our round steak. So what did I did? Excuse, what did I do? Excuse me. <laughs> It was round steak, but she would get round steak on clearance for almost nothing. Yeah. So, Back then it was like yeah. 50 cents a pound. Yeah. And, but we didn't have the money. We had moved to, to this town and we thought Mike had a job when we got there and he didn't. And so we had no money. And so you can go ahead, Mike. And so um, we, <laughs> I cut <laughs> off 
the cat eaten part of the round steak and we cooked the rest of it and we ate it. Now, was that the smart idea? Probably not. I mean, the cat could have had worms or something and I wouldn't have known of that probably. Although, but when you cook, cook stuff, stuff, you got to realize when you cook this stuff and you cook it thoroughly, mm -hmm. it kills everything. It kills all of that. So even if it had worms, it would have just been extra protein for us. <laughs> it's when you're it's eating. a win-win situation there. <laughs> <laughs> so so here's Save the thing money. desperate times call for desperate measures yeah. and this is yet another example of don't throw away good food that you could eat don't let it go to waste mm -hmm. you I hear, mean you hear an underwriting theme you know um don't waste it don't waste it don't waste it yep next one is you may have to eat the same thing for every meal. Now, mom's great example of this is she eats graham crackers for every single breakfast. Now, this serves two purposes. One, it's super easy, so you don't have to think about breakfast. Yeah, that's the main thing. Two, it's cheap and quick. You don't have to cook yeah. anything. It's cheap. It's quick. She can just grab it and eat it. Because I have chronic fatigue syndrome and have to try to figure eat, figure out each morning what to have for food. And that's one of the ways I control my CFS is, I think, as little as possible. <laughs> I hated to say that because I was waiting for my daughter or son-in-law to say something. But I think as little as possible <laughs> on this stuff. And so by just having graham crackers every morning, I don't have to think about it. I just, in a fog, walk in there and start fixing it. Now, there are other things that probably were cheaper, like oatmeal, you know, would be cheaper. And I used to have oatmeal a lot for the kids when uh, we were really, really desperate because it goes, you know, it is much cheaper. But the graham crackers I do now, I'm not dying from anything because I'm eating them every single morning. All her blood morning. works really good. She yeah. And issues. so, you know, there's nothing wrong with eating the same food every day as long as you. That's the tip. You, you are, you may have to eat the yeah. same food for every meal. And it, and they've proven that people who do do that actually keep their weight under control much better. If they eat the same lunch and the same breakfast every day or a variation of two or three things every day, they actually keep their weight under control better. Well, because food, I don't... Um... You don't live, live to eat. eat. I eat, eat to live. live, you know, so food isn't of treasure to me that I can't wait to have it and do that. I just eat it because I have to keep alive, you know, so. Yep. Next one is you may have to go extreme on your grocery budget. Like mom, this is one of our most popular videos that mom has done. And <clears throat> let me tell you, we get more comments on this than anything to the point where I'm having her take pictures of everything she eats now. <laughs> so she can <laughs> prove that she actually eats this way, but Get extreme on your grocery bill. Yeah. I guarantee you, you could eat for $20 a person per week easily. You could easily do that. And you know what else? That we've never pushed this as much with this, this idea. It's January. I've been seeing exercise machines advertised everywhere and lose weight with these special you know weight watchers and all these different special diets and everything and we don't ever push this that much but if you can <coughs> keep your grocery bill down you're going to start losing weight I, I don't know what's happened in the past six months maybe year we've had more people since we've been teaching this. well we've te taught it for years so i have but for some reason people are hearing it more now and that is they've been writing or emailing us and saying, I couldn't believe it. I cut my grocery bill down and I've lost weight, lots of weight, huge amounts of weight. They're so yeah. excited. So they're saving money and they're losing weight. Nowadays, most people do the opposite. They're spending money and they're not losing that much weight. They're buying exercise machines and these special, you know, diet programs, having food sent to their house. If you watch and look at what these things are, it's regular food. They're sending you the portion. If you do the right portion control, then you're going to cut your grocery bill down and you're going to lose weight. It's just as simple as that. There's, you just need to do it, you know. Well, it's like with our organizing show we had last week. We said, stand up and move and get to work. 
it's the same way with our groceries and losing weight. You just need to make up your mind. I'm going to do this. And you may have to put in a little bit of effort, you know, and it'll happen. Yep. All right. Before we get to the next one that I know is going to send people through the roof. <laughs> Diane and I cookbooks, guys. Oops. Upside down and backwards. <laughs> 35% off right now for our New Year's sale, volume one, volume two. Guys, all of these tips are in there. But what's even more important, the recipes that you need for using these tips are in here. We have over 1,200 recipes and tips in our volume one, 800 recipes and tips in our volume two, and over 800 recipes and tips in our gluten-free, dairy-free edition. All right, and we also have our planners, guys, our undated daily planner. We are almost sold out of these, actually. So I'm placing another order, but just so you know, if you want one to get the new year started, I only have 30 left. So just so you guys know. All right, <clears throat> this next one is going to make people flip. Now, I added this to your grocery bill because most people put this in with their grocery bill. I don't put it in with my grocery bill because... I rarely use this. Yeah. yeah. Stop using paper towels. Oh, dear. Did we just lose the entire audience, do you think? <laughs> All right. Paper towels is a huge, huge expense in most people's budgets. I am absolutely shocked. When yeah, people I never tell realized me, how bad this was. I'm not exaggerating. I've had several people say that they they go through. Okay, Mike, you got to put mom's face on here. My face? They go through a roll of paper towels a day. <gasps> oh, my word. I'm not kidding. I've had many comments. They go through a roll of paper towels a day. Okay, tell you why I'm shocked. I moved here a year and a half ago, and I bought a roll of paper towels and I've only used half of it in a year and a half. That's why I'm shocked. I haven't, I've had the, one roll and I'm not even out of it yet. Yeah. And I guess one time I went to a friend's house and I couldn't believe it. She was just going to wipe something on the counter. It wasn't really even a bad spill or anything. And she started, she had the roll paper towel on a paper towel thing and she flicked it with her arm and this huge, I mean, she must have gotten 10, 12 sheets of paper towel and she just ripped them <coughs> off and, you know, wadded it up. It's like, oh, my goodness. <gasps> oh, oh, my goodness. Oxbow Acres says, <coughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> my oh, face made me my goodness. Face. Have you taken your heart medicine today? <laughs> I stopped using paper towels after spending. Guess how much she was spending on a, oh, a I paper have no towels idea. a month. Just I, take a wild guess. Thirty dollars. A hundred and twenty-two dollars a month. Oh my goodness! On paper towel. I don't I'm even sorry. Spell that. Sp I'm sorry. Spend that much on my groceries. <laughs> Holy oh my cow! Goodness. Well, that's good that she stopped. Good. Uh, well, yeah. Good yeah. for you. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I'm good for you. that you realized that that is really good that you stopped. And I'm glad wow. you commented because I don't think people really realize how much they're spending on it. And I'm so glad you commented and let us know because okay. it makes a big difference. Comment, guys, and tell us how many paper towels you use because we are getting, I use a roll every 10 days. Wow. Oh, my goodness. We knew this was a problem, you know, but because there are oh, areas like wow. this that people are spending money, and I don't think they really calculate or figure out how much they are spending in these wow. areas. So here's the thing. We use rags instead of paper towels because every single time we say this, people are like, well, what do you use instead of paper towels? We use rags. We save old T-shirts. We save old towels. We save old dish towels. And terry cloth, you know, um, tablecloths, those types of things. Do they even make those anymore? Mine mm -hmm. are so old. I think they're like 30 years old and I still have them, but the rags from them. But um, we just cut up t-shirts and we use those. And for those of you who don't like washing all this stuff, first of all, to. let's talk about the wash. First of all, let's get the wash straight. Get it together, people. This is a get it together people moment. First of all, <laughs> for oily substances, just throw Gookie, it in the trash. Gookie nasty jobs. It's okay. 
you can throw, I've never been able to figure out why people don't use the rags. They say, well, it's more convenient. How It's just as convenient to throw a rag in the trash as a paper towel in the trash. Yeah. So just throw it away. But here's the thing. I use rags for like cleaning my windows. Well, I use paper, paper towels is the one thing I do use is to clean my mirrors and windows. So that's about the only thing I use it for now. But when I use rags for wiping up spills or cleaning the floor or something like that, I use probably seven, maybe 10 on a really dirty week rags. Guys, the pile literally is this big for the laundry. And it's maybe this thick. It's maybe this wide and this thick. Your perspective of washing is out of touch with reality when it comes to racks. You keep a wash rag and you keep a dish towel and you change those every day. And even that pile of wash rags and dish rags is like this big and it's maybe this thick. So between all of it, you're talking maybe a pile this big between all of the rags, wash rags week. and dish towels for a week. And then you don't have to fold the rags. Just keep a basket and just throw the rags in there. Mm -hmm. You don't have to fold. There's no laundry. And these people who say, well, I'm not going to waste money washing rags. You, you cannot. Oh, I'm having a moment. You cannot tell me. You do not have this much space. In and your load, washing machine a load for of a laundry. load of laundry. I mean, I just throw it in with my white things that I put bleach yeah. in. And I always have more than plenty of room. And it's so. not that big of a deal. Your dryer will sterilize it if you're worried about germs. If you're washing your underwear, you can wash the rag that's wiped up the floor in the meat juices. Now, see, I wouldn't, the meat juices, I would throw it out. Why? But I would just wipe. use a wash rag. Well, and I know, but rag. I would throw it out just because it's a gooey mess. And so gooey messes I will throw out. And But if you wipe up the floor, there's no reason. Just dirt on the floor. Why not just throw it in? But I know? use my wash rag for meat. Like if I drip meat on the floor or something, yeah, I, just use my regular, I just use dish my regular rag. dish yeah, rag. So and I, I, just, rag. I just put bleach in there, you know. So, so. it's not, um, and Vic, just Vicky says no. I am very picky about what I put mix up. I am very picky about what I mix up in the laundry. Listen, if you want to save money, you can't be picky. You're going to have to stop being picky. That's mm -hmm. what it boils down to. And I'm not just hollering at Vicky. She's on here all the time. I love you, Vicky. But you cannot be picky. Well, I know, but even if it's that, ridiculous, if, if you if you are picky about mixing your things, throw them away. See, that's what I yeah. don't understand. People have the argument or the excuse. Well, I don't want to use rags because I don't want to have to wash them. Then don't wash yeah. them. We're saying you can do either or whichever yeah. you want. You, it's not set in stone. Uh, I do half and half. Most of mine I throw away, but like one fourth of them I will wash. And Tar, I think she washes a good percentage of hers, you yeah. know. But you can do whatever you feel comfortable. If you don't feel comfortable mixing them with your laundry, just throw them away. Yeah. There's, no, I don't know why people cannot understand. <clears throat> you can throw a rag in the trash, mm -hmm. uh, just like you can a paper towel. You know, you yeah. really can. And one thing before we get off of this, if you still have to use paper towels for whatever reason. What I do with my paper towels, why they last so long, if I have a clean countertop and I bump my glass of water and I'm afraid it's going to drip off or something like that, I will take a paper towel. And not, if I have to use a paper towel, I probably would use a rag. But if you take a paper towel to wipe that up, let it dry out. And then later on that day, if something needs to be cleaned on the floor, you can use that same paper towel because it's been dried out and wipe up something off the floor. Don't just use it for one little piddly thing and then throw it away. Sometimes you can use it a second time, the paper towels, if you need to. Yep. And on rags, be sure when you use them is I take it and I fold it in half, fold it in force then, and I will dust with it. And then I flip it over to the other side. I dust and you just keep folding. And I can use a whole rag <clears throat> almost to dust the whole house. And when I get done, yeah. I throw it in the trash. I'm done. Yeah. I don't need a microfiber cloth, you know, anything like that. Yep. All right. And the next one is... You may have to eat freezer burned mm. food. 
Okay, I have trouble with this. We eat freezer burn food all the time. Mike's going through the green beans right now. They got stuck behind. <laughs> Listen, freezer burn does not mean that it's spoiled. Yeah, it's still okay. It's, it's just still the fine taste to might be a Mom doesn't bit. like the texture. More the taste, and, probably. Of the well, if it has yeah. a taste. But here's the thing. If you it can has put a sauce on it. Yeah. You know, you can put a sauce on it and won't, it, you can yeah. still eat it. It's, you're not going to die from it is what Tara is saying. Now, the freezer burn food, Mike, put the picture back up there just a second. So the white oh, stuff, gosh. any of them, the white stuff on the freezer burn food there, that is not spoilage. No. All it is is your freezer has defrosted at some time and the water from that was in the food turned back to water. You can go ahead. And then it refroze. Right. I had this happen this past week. Yeah. And my freezer door got left open and I went in there and everything looked like those vegetables. So, yeah. But I could still use it. There's nothing wrong with it. But now sometimes when food is really old or it's been or it's defrosted and refrozen several times, it will get an off taste. Just use some sauces. Use some spices. <laughs> You know, it's when we were doing Thanksgiving, everybody kept asking me, I found a turkey that's three years old in the back of my freezer. Can I eat it? I said, well, you're going to spend about 50 cents of oven cooking money. Just go ahead and throw it in the oven. It's worth so the risk of 50 it. cents. Try it and see if it tastes okay. Like the ones that Mike's working through the green beans right now that got stuck at the back of the freezer. They taste just fine. They just look bad. Yeah, what you've got to understand, this stuff is not going to cause you food poisoning and deadly diseases, you know. It's just going to taste a little bit off, whether it's canned vegetable with an expiration date or the freezer stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's, you don't need to be afraid of it like that. And always remember, when you cook something, that usually kills almost everything that's in there. I would rather eat something... Uh, that might be expired or has freezer burn on it with it and cook it, then sometimes some of the organic stuff you can buy some places because we had several times in Wichita where they were saying, you don't eat this because I forget what it was, lettuces and that type of thing. Was you know what E. coli is? Poop. Yeah. And they, on the it's organic prep, bacteria. On the organic, you know, vegetables, they were having a big run of that. And so I feel safe for eating some cooked meat from the freezer that has a little freezer bone burn or some, you know, canned goods that are yeah. expired. All right, guys, we put your questions in the comments. Mike will send them to me. Dining on Dine Cookbooks, Volume 1 and Volume 2. It is our New Year sale, 35% off. Yes. We are selling them. We are getting our house paid off as soon as we can. So we are pushing the sales right now. And our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook, which is 35% off. And then all of our eBooks are 50% off on particular eBooks. On Just go and look and you can see the price. There's no coupon code needed. The price is already marked down. And um, <clears throat> you can... Just go in and put it in there. No coupon code or anything needed. Um, and guys, with the questions, put in there if you got any organizing done from the last time. I'm curious to see if anybody did any organizing or, you know, you got something done. Pop it in the comments. All right. Here we go. Questions that Mike says he sent me. And here, here they are. Is. Okay. <laughs> Uh, several people asked, have you done your grocery haul this year yet? I have not actually. Um, it's on my to-do list. And so, um, I had, we didn't have kids for Christmas, but my daughter came up last weekend. And so we've, I haven't, I just honestly haven't had time to do it. So, and it's going to be kind of a mm. ordeal to do a thousand dollar grocery haul. And next Monday, they are tearing my kitchen apart. To remodel it. So I don't know when I'm going to get it done. I was hoping to get it done before the kitchen remodel. Maybe I'll just have to do it for the new kitchen. Maybe I'll do that. In six months? In October. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a little nervous. I I almost had a breakdown this week and we haven't even started the kitchen remodel yet. <laughs> I'm going tomorrow to the uh, third kitchen designer. <laughs> 
to see if she can help me figure out um, which cabinets I can use. So anyway, all right. Connie says, Jill, I thank you for the kick in the hind quarters, I'm sure. But <laughs> I got my home back together and my family is loving it. Way to go. Very good. Mary, I'm glad to hear that. Mary says, I love Tightwad Tuesday. I'm trying so hard to make things go further. It is working. You yes, go, girl. Very good. Very good. Uh, Teal, I have no idea what that other, hef, hefia, I don't know. FYI, so a couple of days ago, I tried using banana to replace eggs to make pancake, and they were so fluffy, fluffy and delicious, I've made them every day for three days straight. That Very is great. Good. At $9 yeah. for 18, I ain't, do, I ain't paying that. Yeah. It's yeah. ridiculous. And guys, if you need substitutions, we have a whole section on substitutions back here. And um, there's even some for eggs. Well, where'd it go? Well, I don't it's know where it went, it. but it's in, it's in here. You can <laughs> find a whole look chapter at index. It's on in substitution. Uh, Sharon, my husband says that I am just cheap. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> yes. Good for you. <laughs> uh, Umbrella Grape Solutions Take Two says, hi, you lovely ladies from England. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. Yeah, love England. <laughs> love you guys. Thank you for your channel. Mom's been re-watching All Creatures Great and Small. Oh, I know. I love All Creatures so Great and Small. She's been loving that. Mm -hmm. And Amy says she made the turkey recipe in our Dining on a Dime Cookbook Volume 1 on page 240. There was a typo, so page 240, not 250, as it says in the index. She made it for Christmas, and it was a hit. Of course it was. Very good. <laughs> Guys, uh, that listen. I'm not trying to toot our own horn here, but I'm going to toot our own horn. <laughs> these recipes in these cookbooks have been tested. This one is 70 years of my family's recipes and my recipes combined. This one are all the rest of them that we couldn't fit in here. <laughs> the reason why they taste so good is because we actually use enough salt. We actually use sugar. It's just old fashioned. And it's good old fashioned, fashioned cooking. Everyday cooking that you have ingredients usually at home for. Dairy free, gluten free, dairy free. I tested every single recipe. I tested 40 bread, sandwich bread recipes before I got it right in here. And let me tell you. If you follow the directions exactly, you will have delicious homemade gluten-free sandwich bread for only $1.50 instead of the almost $8 it is for a loaf of gluten-free bread now. She said exactly because I get a lot of comments of this recipe didn't quite turn out. I just changed this ingredient and that ingredient and then I changed this ingredient by the time they're done with a six ingredient recipe, they've changed four of the ingredients and they wonder why the recipe didn't out. turn out. Yeah. So that's try at least the first time yeah. like we have it written. And then you can start substituting if you wanted to. Heather says, I spent quite a lot last year paying off debt and she stocked up on food and essentials. Very good. good job. Very good. Susan, I tried to buy chicken at Kroger's, was out for days and didn't get back in until the sale was off. Tried three Kroger's. So ask if you can get a rain check. Some stores still do rain rain checks but sometimes it's going to be hit or miss but you so this is another tip that we need to this is another tip that we need to add to our list here is you may have to go to more than one store mm -hmm. and i have been known to go to three four five grocery stores looking for a particular sale item in stock because i knew it was going to save me literally hundreds of dollars if i could find it in stock and stock up on it mm -hmm. So, and yeah, if you think about it, that could save you, say, an hour's worth of work, maybe $30, $45 for an hour's worth of work. Mm -hmm. And a lot of women say, you know, I just can't afford to be a stay at home mom. This is how you can afford to do it. You know, yeah. you can save like that. Instead of working an hour someplace else, you could work at home doing this type of thing. Andrea says, first time catching all live. I just purchased Dining on a Dime Volumes 1. And volume two. Oh, thank and you. And I didn't get much work done scanning through all the tremendous <laughs> tips and ideas. That's because you're going to save so much more money on your grocery bill using our tips and ideas. I still think this is so funny. The first, one of the first uh, letters we got after when we started selling the book was the 
the gal said, I stayed up all night reading your cookbook. I thought, who stays up all night reading a cookbook? And now we get that comment like, And we all get the that time. comment yeah. constantly. People just stay up for hours into the wee hours yeah. reading the cookbook. And Sandy is wishing us all a happy new year. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Kimberly, in Vietnam, they were eating sea rations from World War II. In Desert Storm, they were eating sea rations from Vietnam. And in Operation Iraqi Freedom, they were eating sea rations from Desert Storm. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. Well, that good stay good for a long time as long as they're not damaged. Yeah. Yeah. My dad was in the military and he'd bring home tons of sea rations and they were so outdated. And my brother and I just loved them. So, yeah. Um, okay. Let me look up this next question. I'm pretty sure we already have this on our website, but while I'm answering the next question, <laughs> Barbara loved our laundry at the creek video. It was so hysterical. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's see. Sarah says, is there a page showing how long things last and the expiration dates? Yes. So if you go to our website, Mike, can you get the stockpile, e, uh, the stockpile page? Um, we have it in our stockpile ebook that is free. If you want our free stockpile ebook, um, it is right here actually. I don't know if Mike got the link, so I will throw it in here real quick. And it is right here. Mike will get it to put in the description for later for you guys. We have all the expiration dates listed in that. So you can figure out um, if you should be eating something or not. Thank you. Regina just ordered the gluten-free cookbook today. <gasps> Chrissy says she loves her planner. <laughs> Everybody's saying they're loving the planners. I'm so glad, guys. I'm so glad. <laughs> we only have 30 left. Well, I don't know how many we have left now since the show's on. But anyway, we have our planners for the new year if you need one. Um, thank you, Sandy. She's liking our hair. Well, thank you. And Sierra. Oh, now this is going to be a show. And I'm going to do this probably, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. We'll see. <clears throat> Anyone else's New Year's resolution to cook more meals at home using their cookbooks? I never even, it never occurred to me that people would make their New Year's resolution to cook more home. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I never, ever even crossed my mind that people would do that. Mm -hmm. That is a great idea. It's and I'm going really to do good, tomorrow, yeah. probably to, either tomorrow or well, probably tomorrow or Saturday show. I don't know which. Really good idea. Yeah. That is, I didn't even occur to me, but mm -hmm. yeah. Jeannie, we get hamburger every day for the next week. I have a new plat dish planned every day. You go. Very good. Go. Um, <clears throat> Tanya, my grocery bill was under $70 for two people last week, and I did get extra stuff for our colds. Very good. You guys are amazing. <laughs> Very much. Uh, and in case you guys are wondering why well, I'm drinking out of my new gnome cup, Alice sent me. Thank you. Thank you. He's more cute. <laughs> we all have a cold too. I know. Yeah. Jack came down with it like eight days ago or something. And now Mike and mom and I have it. So. Oh, while you're thanking, Cheryl gave me these earrings. They're so cute. They're black and red. <coughs> Jack, is that choking you? <laughs> Are you cracking up over that? <coughs> and I love wearing my black and red plaid shirt, and they go perfect with that. So thank you, Cheryl. I want to thank you. You guys were so sweet on this. I just can't thank you enough for the stuff you sent us. So are you okay? <laughs> <coughs> do you not need to hold your arms up in the air? <laughs> I swallowed wrong. Take another right. drink real quick. Heather says, we stopped buying eggs. I refuse to pay $5 a dozen. Yeah, that's ridiculous. No, it's crazy. We just won't buy it. If that's the case. Yeah, that's what. We we'll... just won't buy it. Mm -hmm. I have not purchased the $9 for 18 eggs yet. But I just won't buy it. Yeah. <clears throat> Jenny's Farm, Sweet Farm says, I made your Texas Roadhouse copycat rolls. Uh, is it in this? I think it's in this it's one. in that one, yeah. For Sunday dinner, and they were so good. Oh, my goodness. They're really good. Don't tell mom, know. but they're better than the 90-minute rolls. I know what you're saying. I like them better, too. Really good. I like them better, too. They're really good. 
that beats our 50 year old recipe for the 90 year old. Yeah. For the 90 does. <clears throat> minute rolls. And we've got really honey butter too. In... Yeah. And we have the honey butter to go with it. Yeah. To go with it. Mm. And there's a secret ingredient in the that honey makes butter. it so good. All right. Uh, Connie. Oh, yes. Thank you. I have lost some weight. Thank you very much. Which is why, for those of you wondering in all my Taiwan Tuesdays, why I'm coming home with so many clothes. Because I've lost weight, so I'm getting rid of the big clothes. See? Did you hear that? I'm not saving them. You I'm get getting rid, rid of, of the big clothes and <clears throat> replacing them. I think I'm pretty much done. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but yeah, thank you very much. Um, Auntie Elizabeth, eating out, we don't. Uh, if you want organic bread, make sourdough for 28 cents a loaf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, going back to our bread for $1 loaf, <clears throat> you know, we had the comment, well, where can you find bread for a dollar loaf? I'm like at every single Walmart in the United States. And this lady's like, oh, well, I have to have my 12 grain five nut loaf. Well, you're going to have to come down off of your pedestal. And maybe just eat some white bread for a change. And if you want your 12 grain five nut loaf, make your own. And she said, oh, well, I would never make my own bread. That's what keeps you poor. Yeah. And the Sorry. thing is, guys, things might be getting tighter and tighter, you know, in the next year. And so you're going to have to change a few attitudes and think a little different. We're so used, especially here in the States, you know, and a few other countries like maybe England or Canada or something, that this is what I deserve. This is what I want. And I've always had this. I'm not going to change. You can't have an attitude of not changing. The only way you survive in the world is being willing to change and change things, you know, yep. and keep going on. That's the way you survive. Yep. Um, <clears throat> Red Robin says, I have lived in an affluent area and it's amazing what people donate or throw in the trash. Oh my goodness. If you're a tightwad uh, in an affluent area, you have hit the jackpot. Tara, well, they didn't <sighs> live in an affluent area necessarily, but people in Colorado and the new housing areas, every time they move, they throw everything out. I mean, like furniture. Literally all the kitchen everything. cabinets, all the countertops, all the furniture. Everything. And buy new. Yeah. And they would, when they move, they buy brand new. And you can't imagine this stuff because her neighborhood <clears throat> wasn't that old when they first got in there and everything. And the people were throwing out unbelievably nice stuff. Gail says her daughter would say, is that daddy food or doggy food on reusing the kids? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good training. That's so true. <laughs> Janet, how long past the expiration date do you think a jar of mayo is okay? So this is the only thing yeah. that I would not eat past the expiration date is any salad dressing or condiments like mayonnaise that have eggs and dairy in them. Yeah. I would not eat those past the expiration date. You could maybe cream. go a month. Yeah, month yeah or you two, can go a couple But I months, wouldn't go. But not any farther. <clears throat> That's food poisoning waiting to happen. Yeah. The cream. Think of it this way. Dairies and meats. You know, that type of thing. Now, not uh, canned. Canned meat's been cooked and it's okay. But, you know, just other. Yep. Cindy says, in December, I spent about two hours a week going through grocery ads, comparing sales, buying only what I needed. I realized at the end of the month, I still had $250 left in her food budget. Very good. <laughs> yes. Yes. You deserve you go, a round girl. of applause. Very that good. That is great. See, this is totally doable. The things yeah. we tell you is doable. And if you're getting <clears throat> overwhelmed, do one thing. Just do one thing the next week or two. And then add something else to it. And you'll just gradually keep going. Yep. I'm telling you, my grocery bill is actually going down. It's going yeah. down. I haven't I haven't noticed. It hasn't up. gone up at all. Mm -mm. And now with this week's chicken purchase, <clears throat> it's actually going down. Oh, my goodness. We got to buy on avocados for 25 cents. I, I haven't, haven't had seen that. For years. Probably 20, 15 to 20 years. 25 cents for an avocado. So I've had several meals yeah. with avocados. In it. Yeah, we've been eating a lot of avocados, avocados this week and they're good. They're good avocados too. <clears throat> yeah, man. Um, okay, let's see. How do I know if something has botulism? So like I said on the salad dressings, do not. Don't even chance it. Salad dressing, mayonnaise, is anything with a mayonnaise base or dairy base for your salad dressings, do not use those 
Also, um, for your canned goods, how do you know, Mom, if canned goods are bad? Well, if the can's bulging or dented or something like that, usually that's a sign I wouldn't even <clears throat> touch a can that has uh, dents or bulging. That yeah. just throw those away. I don't care what their exp expiration date is, anything, just throw those away. So why is that important? Because that means the bacteria is already it's growing in there. In there. Yeah. That's the number one <clears throat> way to know. Jim, will Tara chainsaw the ch kitchen next week? I was thinking about it. <laughs> I was thinking She's about it. She's threatened. She really has been thinking about I it. I was thinking about it. I might have to use the sawzall. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't the want chainsaw. her to do a chainsaw. Oh, my goodness. She, just, she cut herself on a knife again. With my days, luck, I would hit something would and the chain would break off. Everything. She's going to come with the story of getting a giant splinter in her head <laughs> and having to go to the hospital, and having to have Mike hold her hand while she's live streaming from the hospital bed <laughs> while they're working on the splinter in her head. So I would probably do that. We're kind of probably. discouraging the chainsaw yes. thing. <laughs> we're trying to keep her from doing it. No, she's <laughs> I don't know. If Mike and I have to hold her down and tie her up to keep her from going near it. Right, Mike? If nothing <laughs> else, I'll at least take a sledgehammer. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I don't know. I got to do something. But I only have till Monday. With your luck, the hammer would bounce back and hit <clears throat> you in the forehead. And then we'd really have a yeah. mess. Oh, my word. Um, <clears throat> Deb, is volume one the same as the spiral barrel I brought previously? Yes, it is the same book. This is volume one. Volume two is new and not in that edition. And Vicki is having our honey baked chicken. That is our number one recipe on our website is our honey baked chicken from our Dining on a Dime cookbook volume one. Guys, all of our cookbooks are 35% off right now for our New Year's sale, including our gluten-free, dairy-free edition. These recipes actually taste good and work if you follow them exactly. Don't make any substitutions until you follow them exactly first. I don't, every, every single person that has had a problem with any of our recipes, they haven't followed it exactly to start with. It's okay when you're an experienced cook and you know how to substitute things. Wait till you see my muffins where I substituted milk, I substituted eggs, and I substituted, uh, what was the other thing? I said, oh, and shortening. <laughs> And they actually worked. <laughs> but we don't recommend that until you actually know how to bake and cook. Or have and tried a recipe. So tried a, a recipe, recipe first so you know what it tastes like. Mm -hmm. And especially with the gluten-free uh, cooking. But even with our regular cookbook. Kimmy, what? Oh, from She's in Her Apron. <laughs> what is the name of the gluten-free flour you like for your bread recipe? So the sandwich bread, gluten-free, dairy-free, dining on a dime. <clears throat> the one that I like the best and is the cheapest, I don't necessarily think it cooks better. It's just the cheapest is the Walmart great value gluten-free bread. It comes in, let's see, do I have one in here? Mm, no. Which it comes in a purple bag and it's about this big and now it's like $3. And what something. you're trying to say is it tastes just as good as the more expensive ones, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it all of, all of the, Cup for cup, gluten-free flours like King Arthur is really good. Bob's Red Mill is really good. Pamela's is really good. Um, but the Great Value Walmart is the cheapest. And it's just as good. It's just as good. So, yeah. Um, Bernie, I made the gluten-free bread with the store-bought purple bag flour. That's the one I'm mm -hmm. recommending. I cannot get it to rise. I used a new can of baking powder, used a thermometer for the water and yeast, tried it twice to to a tea, it would not rise. So was your yeast dead? Did you proof your yeast first? You might make sure your yeast is um, proofed and make sure your yeast is alive. You may have gotten dead uh, yeast. Also, altitude makes a difference on the sandwich bread in this one. I could not get the recipe to work. And then I sent it to my assistant who lived in Minnesota at the time. And <clears throat> she did. And I realized it was altitude. So make sure you're following the altitude directions. And if you're like us, where you're on the border for altitude, here where we're at in Wyoming, we're at like 3,500. So we could go up or down. If it's not working, maybe adjust it for the altitude also. But you do have to follow it to a T. And it, it will work. When people follow it to a T, 
there's something that they're doing that's wrong or their yeast is dead and they didn't yeah. know it. And be sure you don't kill the yeast, you know, with too hot water or whatever. Yeah. Well, she said she used a thermometer. Oh, so thermometer, that would, yeah. yeah. And that's fine. But yeah. Um, <clears throat> Kimberly says, what's funny is I actually read the cookbook as a book. That's so funny. Yeah. We have a lot of people <clears throat> say that. We just, we think that's hilarious. <laughs> Genevieve loves our towels. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Those are cute. Um, Sarah, I use paper towels as my napkins. I fold a sheet in half or two. My paper towels last a few months. I guess I could buy a rag or cloth napkin, or you could just buy regular nap paper napkins. I haven't test check it to see. We should check it. It, it I used to be the paper napkins were a lot a cheaper than cheaper. Yeah. So if you need to do, you know, something like that, then use the cheaper the cheaper napkins. Yeah. <clears throat> Barbara, Polly, oh, Barbara. Oh, Barbara. <laughs> we love you, Barbara. Barbara sent us uh, the coolest gifts for Christmas. She did. Oh, And I goodness. love the chicken mug thing, the <laughs> soup bowl thing that you sent. That was so awesome. Oh, that everything. one next week. <laughs> that was the coolest teacup. Oh, it was really. <clears throat> she said she reorganized her linen closet. Very good. Wow. Good <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Shirley, I donated any Christmas decorations that we did not use this year. Well, there you go. Maybe I need to send all of mine back to the thrift store so I have something to get for my thrift store haul next week. <laughs> oh. Only kidding. She has an addiction to the thrift stores. Just Vicki, Tara, I love that you're using your vintage thing. Thank you. I think I'm going to use it. My only quandary is that the inside isn't as new as I would like it, but... I was going to put a mat down anyway because I have this thing where I drop stuff and I don't want glasses and stuff to break in there real easy. So it's not going to really matter anyway. I don't know. I got till Monday to decide. It makes me feel old, though. Everybody calls that a vintage sink, and that's what I had in my first house that I yeah, used Yeah, your house years. was built in 1920. <laughs> uh, and I hated it back then. It was so old-fashioned. We called it old-fashioned. <laughs> Faith says, I reorganized my kitchen drawers. Good for Very you. Very good. I'm going to be doing that how, next week how myself. How does that make you guys feel? Doesn't it feel good to get something like that done? I know it does me anyway. Yeah, as I go through to take everything to get out, I have to have everything out of my kitchen by Monday. And as I am, I'm going through everything and dumping. As a matter of fact, I'm getting new mixing bowls. I'm like, I am so tired of mixing bowls not working together. I'm just going to get something that stacks together, and I'm just going to spend the money and do it. Um... Deb says, decluttering my clothes and closet and bought a Lazy Susan for the fridge condiments. Thanks to listening to you, ladies. Thank Very you. good. Good going. And those clothes clothes are hard sometimes to do. People don't want to let go of yeah. them. So that was hard. Amanda, I've been gone a while. What Your new house is beautiful. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Uh, Faylina says, I've organized my kitchen and declared my house. Husband is an organized type of person, so it's difficult at best. Well, you just got to keep doing what you can do. I know. I yeah. had one of those. So, BK says, will butter prices come down anytime soon? Probably not, so. but you might catch a sale here and there. Maybe Easter you'll get a good sale. I keep trying to catch it on sale. I think butter prices are probably up to stay now. And one thing about the butter is if you can keep your butter out of the refrigerator and soft, you you'll tend to use less when you spread it on your toast. You won't, if you, if it's harder, you're going to cut more, more chunks of it and try to get it spread where if it's soft, you'll spread it thinner. Dining on Nine Cookbook, 35% off right now, guys, has how to make soft butter. Yeah, I was going to say, here. we have how to make soft whip, butter. Yeah, whipping it and making soft butter because then it'll, it'll yeah. just go farther. Because 25 years ago when we wrote the book, that was the same problem everybody and was having. And another thing, so. people have a problem with this a lot of times, but it's really better if you can use margarine in your baking. A lot of people mm -hmm. keep thinking they need to do the butter. And, and in baking recipes, a lot of them call for shortening, <coughs> and that's because there is a reason it's shortening and not butter because it makes them the yep. texture and everything better. Um, <clears throat> KM says, yes, Jill, I did declutter in 15 minutes. I set my phone timer. Good job. Very good. good job. I liked you set your timer. <laughs> Jessica organized my office and did some insulating in the ba basement. Good job. Wow. That's a hard area. TS got her decorations 
organized and donated. Very good. Margaret says, thank you for the egg substitutions. You're welcome, Margaret. MI Mom says, I'm doing no spend January, not spending on anything for lists or whatever. You know what? That's good if you have a spending problem, but I do not believe in no spend January, just so you guys know. I think that is the biggest mistake people can make because you can find so many after Christmas good the stock sales. up deals, chickens on sale because everybody's on a diet last week. That's how I got the hundred pounds of chicken. If I did no sell, if I did no spend January, I would have lost out on hundreds of dollars of savings. I mean, yeah. probably close to it. I probably saved close to a thousand dollars last week alone. And so by spending the money in January, now I don't have to buy chicken for like six months. Yeah. So it's, there's a lot of things that there, the, the stores got so full of stuff for Christmas and whatever's not, you know, sold, they want to get rid of it. So they do a lot of really good sales for different things. Yep. Um, <clears throat> I love, I'm loving you guys been watching, binge watching your videos and they're helping me a lot. I feel better or I feel like your tips actually work. That is Toka Anna. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Our tips do actually work because we live them. <laughs> so we know when there's stupid tips. And let me well, tell you, there are stupid tips. We've had to practice this for years, you know, just out of necessity. <clears throat> so, um, Joanna, Tar. <laughs> Tara, it was so nice of Ellie to need a bin so I could get another Christmas tree. I know, it wasn't my daughter. <laughs> was, was so nice. You'll sacrifice for your daughter, huh? <laughs> yeah, now I don't know what I'm going to do with all these Christmas. I mean, I can poke them in the ground all over my house, which is fine because the deer eat everything else. So, I didn't but... have a chance to tell you before we started, but I set my Christmas tree out by your other pile okay. to give you another one. And I have eight Christmas trees. <laughs> Wanda Weber says she used our turkey recipe from Dining Eye Dine volume one, 35% off right now for the holidays. And it was super good. Good, good. good A for lot you. of you had success with that. I'm glad. Oh, Karen, she lives in Lewistown. We know where Lewistown, Montana is. <clears throat> Two hours from Billings, if you guys want to come up this summer. Actually, that was one of the places we had looked at moving was Lewistown. Um, we love it up there. It's so pretty. Uh, there was a movie film there. What movie was filmed? Lewis Town or Livingston? <clears throat> well, she says, oh, well, I don't know. Which one was it? I can't remember. Up there anyway, someplace probably. Too. Maybe it was Livingston I was thinking of. I don't know. Well, there was one Montana town that we really liked. Yeah, we looked at. we like Montana. <clears throat> I'm not going to pull up the map, but whatever it is that goes to Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> Oh, sorry. Wrong Lua. Uh, <laughs> Ashley says she made our turkey also. <laughs> Yay! I'm so glad to hear you guys it. really liked it. Lisa says, since your last video on organizing, I've been watching it over and over again. My late husband was a pack rat, pack uh. rat and it drove me crazy. I'm emotionally ready to clean out my house. Girlfriend, when you're ready, go for go it. Go for it. Don't stop. Go Just keep for going. It. Yeah. Just get in the groove and, and get going. And the first little section you get done, it'll feel so good. You'll just keep being motivated. Yeah. Jenny's Farm Sweet Farm says, I use your cookbooks almost every day. Thank oh. you. Even my teenage daughters use it to cook. I wish my teenage daughter would have used it to cook. <laughs> you, oh, I shouldn't talk. I'm sorry, Ellie, if you ever watch this in the future. <laughs> she hates it when I talk about her on the show, but... She would pull up these recipes and she's like, oh, I found this pumpkin bread. I'm like, it's only got four stars. I know one that has five stars. <laughs> she was Just saying. Pulling up our re recipes sim similar to ours. <laughs> I was like, but your saying, mother is a world famous cookbook author. Like you're not, a, a, what is it? A prophet is not accepted in his <laughs> own land or something like that. <laughs> That's not the truth. I know. I don't even know if half my family's read. You know, my extended family has even read or have my cookbook. So. <laughs> oh, well, that's fine. We're the, never mind. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> DZ says McDonald's raised their drinks from a dollar to a dollar twenty-nine. Realized that 65 years ago our landlords had a pantry in the basement and baking kitchen and shop the sales once a month and did laundry detergent bulk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Although, honestly, I don't blame restaurants for raising their prices. Well, no. Because if they're having to pay people $20 an hour to flip burgers, well, which is ridiculous. Yeah, they're having to pay higher wages and the food prices for them are going up, too. So, naturally, you know, theirs is going to be yeah. start getting higher. I don't know. Um, Suzanne says, I actually was wondering if there's any point in separating clothes. Really? You know, you can separate out your whites, but I just buy everybody all black socks. We have a few white for the summer, but I don't even do white separately anymore because I don't have really any. So, you know, I'll bleach things every now and then, but really not that often. Mom separates everything, but I just don't have clothes that are. Well, I separate whites, lights, and darks. I do three is all I do. I don't get too, too particular. Yeah. Loretta, is it okay to soak rags for a few days in water and vinegar until I can wash them? Or is it better to build a pile of rags? It doesn't really matter, but I just, what I do is I just lay them over the edge of the washing machine and let them dry out. Mm -hmm. And then if somebody needs to use the, like if one of the kids needs to wash their clothes, then I'll just take it out and put it in the laundry basket after it's dried. But <coughs> I yeah. just let them dry up. <coughs> But again, if you're worried about the washing and how to do it and everything, just throw the rag out. You know, you can do that. Cheryl's goal is to pay off her car in the next three months. You go, girl. You can do it. Very good. Yes. Make it two months. <laughs> um, on the rags, do we have a video on, did I cut rags up one mm -hmm. time? So yeah. if, we, if they go, if you go to our channel uh, and type in rags, you'll get a whole thing video. I think I even showed how to cut up a t-shirt maybe. And rags on there just to give you an idea of what to yep. do on the rags. Yep. Um, Mary Beth, what is the substitution for eggs that you use the most? Probably applesauce and bananas. That's what I use. And, well, and, and flax seeds. Ground flax seed. Ground flax seed, bananas, and applesauce. It just depends on what I'm making. And see, think about this. Whatever happens to be on sale... If you find one of those on sale, then that week you can use those for substitution. So, like, right now I have a whole bunch of homemade applesauce from apples that we um, picked. And then I um, cooked it up in the applesauce in September, October. And so um, I have a whole bunch of that in the freezer. So that's why I'm using applesauce. So she should use applesauce. In. Mm -hmm. Cheryl, what can you use in, in place of expensive Clorox? Not really much. I mean, you can no. use the off bleach, although mom thinks it doesn't bleach as well, but you can't. Now, one thing too, make sure you're not using too much bleach. A lot of people, uh, yeah. weigh with laundry detergent, bleach, all that stuff. They just pour a whole bunch in, just measure this stuff out and not only measure it out, but I even cut it down in half for what it says to do. So, you know, <clears throat> you can just, uh, make, make sure that's a, Best way to save is make sure you're not using too much. Yeah. Connie. <clears throat> Question for Tara. Will you consider selling any of your paintings? I really like the recent one with the bird on the limbs. Well, thank the bird you. We call it. Branch. No, you don't, mother. Oh. It's <laughs> bird on a branch. <laughs> Let's practice, shall we? No, I don't bird want to practice. On a branch. <laughs> we always joke that it's always cabin. In the woods. The first one she made, what was it? They were bird. It was yeah, it was bird. bird. Tara kept going around. See, I named it bird. bird. <laughs> so we keep joking around that it's a mom go. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of van go, it's mom go. Oh my goodness. Oh, we have no entertainment in our lives. <laughs> we uh <laughs> We do need we to, to get, get out more. We do need to get out more, don't we? <laughs> All right. Next batch of questions. Just a second, guys. Dining on a Dime Cookbooks Volume 1 and Volume 2. 35% off right now for our New Year's sales. All of these tips are in here, including the recipes. We have over 800 recipes to go with the tips. Now, I <laughs> so, want you to think about this. 800 recipes. Or, how many? 500 recipes. Sorry, I got my tips. Oh, okay. 500 recipes, but still. 500 recipes. How many cookbooks do you know have 500 recipes in them? Besides the tips on top of that, you know. Yep. Yeah. Karen, um, living stun is towards Idaho. Sorry, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> I was getting my livings yes. mixed up there. I, I even loved... spent the night in living stun one time, and I thought that was the coolest little town. I loved it. Okay. They're not even the same. One's living stun. I know. And one's that's Lewis what I was town. wondering when you said. <laughs> okay. I was getting my lulls mixed up. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's been a long day. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I would love to go up there, actually. <laughs> oh, I loved it when I stayed there that time. It was so, it, that was one of the nicest motels I have ever stayed in my whole life yeah. in that town. But anyway, yes. Monta we still like any place in Montana. My, my sister-in-law is from that Montana. Well, so. I don't like but well, yeah, Billings, you got to have a city somewhere. Yeah, so yeah, I don't really like Billings, but the rest of my the little nice. towns, the smaller <laughs> towns in Montana. I love <laughs> Candy says, oh my goodness, you guys are crazy. <laughs> Candy says, I didn't like turkey until <laughs> she tried our turkey recipe and she loves it. Now I'm telling you, if it you don't like turkey every time and here's the thing, they're on clearance now. Yeah, I the saw holidays them just are last over. week. Uh huh. Go get yourself two or three turkeys, have the butcher cut them in half, and just cook them. Nothing nice. Nothing says you have to have turkey just at Christmas and Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. You can have them throughout the year, yeah. and they make up. Yeah. You get so much off of them. You know, you can get like a week or two worth of meals off of that. So, And don't forget, guys, I forgot to mention our undated daily planner, almost 400 pages. It's undated. We are almost out. I had 30 at the start of the show, and I've announced it several times, so I don't know if we still have them in stock. It will say sold out when we are sold out. So just if you want an undated planner, they are going quick. Everybody's been talking about them, so I think they're loving them. Tanya, won't margarine make it taste different? Mm-mm. Not for baked mm -mm. goods. It would on toast. On toast, yeah. But in baked goods, <clears throat> it makes it, it usually it makes the, the product better. Because like if you make cookies with butter and it calls for shortening or margarine, they'll just flatten out and just kind of mush melt out, you know. And that's cookies, they sh really shouldn't mm -hmm. be doing that. And just a whole lot of different things, you know. And another substitution is, which is what I use for my dairy-free part of the gluten-free, dairy-free baking is you can use shortening with a little bit of butter flavoring. Yeah. If, if you can't find either butter or margarine. I mean, now it's getting to the point where you never know what's going to be in stock where. So, mm -hmm. you know, you just kind of have to be making um, adjustments. Uh, Red Robin, it's January 4th and my credit card balance is zero. Very good, good job. Good job. Oh, good wow. job. Good job. We have job. so many lately that are really, you guys are doing really good job getting out of debt and stuff. Yep. Uh, Bernie says when she made the gluten-free bread and it didn't work out, it foamed after five minutes so her yeast was good. I, man, I don't know what to tell you then. Um. The only other thing, if you're sure your baking powder was good and you're sure your yeast was good, it could be the altitude. Try it one more time with the altitude adjustment. I don't know where you live, and let's see if she says she doesn't say. Now, with humidity, does it affect this no, recipe? The humidity doesn't matter. Okay, because some so. places humidity can make a difference. Yeah, not on this one, it doesn't. Uh, Sacred Wonders, is this the studio or Jill's? This is our studio. Yeah. This is our, st I had thought about getting this thing refurbished and putting it in my kitchen too. But as mom and I were looking, can you see this? I don't think it would hold a cookie sheet. Yeah, it's not, it's not quite as wide as a. The cookie sheets must regular. be a lot bigger now than yeah. they used to be. Yeah. I don't think you would like cooking on the open, the open burners like we used to do because it's too much to clean. Yeah, that's true. I like my, I like my glass top. I do love my glass top, my glass top uh, stove. That's the best thing ever. Are we ever going to show your house? Stephanie wants to know. Yeah, as soon as I can get something done to it. I'm sorry, guys. I just have not <clears throat> become one with my house. Well, as a matter of fact, it was only like a week or two before Christmas. I got almost all of my boxes unpacked. I'm real, but see, I my mom's was here for like a, the past what? She was here for like three months. Then I got COVID at the end of each one of those visits, you know, and everything. And so it's just been one thing after another that I just have not had the umption to get anything done. So I'm working on it. I'm working on yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, Kimmy says grocery deals are good right now. She found a dollar ninety nine chicken breast. Yeah, I mean, there's their grocery bills, uh, bills, their grocery sales all over everywhere. I mean, they are just so stinking good it's crazy i mean it's just absolutely crazy um that's why we we it's good that you want to try to do the no spend januaries and stuff because you're motivated and want to do something to help with your if you have a spending problem then don't 
yeah, you know, yeah. But you know, one that's one thing. Um, we could, don't push it because we there are a lot of good sales, you know, in January, and it's more of changing your habits, just not for one month. But it's better to change your habits yeah. for, you know, all the time. And so if you start slowly doing a few things, it helps a little bit more than just taking one month and saying I'm not going to spend, <coughs> because it's like dieting. A lot of people say, I'm going on a carrot and celery diet diet, and I'm going to eat nothing but this till I lose my weight. And the minute, you know, like a week or two in, you're tired of it. It's not working for you. And so then you almost binge eating more than what you did That's before why in some ways. I don't follow Dave Ramsey. <laughs> you know why? It has nothing to do with a budget. Yeah, a budget, a budget is not going to help you get out of debt and save spending. money. It's you're stopping spending money. Now, I totally get it. I know I'm going to get all these comments and I totally get it. Just go ahead and comment anyway, because it'll just help the algorithm know that we're popular. So just say it anyway. <laughs> but it's not about the budget. It's about I refuse to pay more than a dollar for a stick of deodorant. Mm -hmm. I refuse to pay more than a dollar for a loaf of bread. I refuse to pay more than $2 for a gallon of milk. Why? Because I know that I can make do until it goes on sale again, or I can find a clearance or a good deal again, or I'll just do without. And so it actually has to do more with your mindset <clears throat> than it does with a budget. And I know a budget kind of helps your mindset. I get that, whatever. But, you know, I just know I'm not going to turn my heat above 68 I keep it at 68. Why? Because I ain't going to pay $700 for a heat bill when I can pay $250 for a heat bill. Well, one thing too, um, so it's kind of like making menus out, you know, it helps some people like five or 10% of the population, yeah. but the other 90% or more making menus, we think we're going to make a menu out and then we're going to stick to that menu and that's going to save us money. Well, what happens is if something's on sale this week that you didn't know about, you got that menu down. Well, it would be better to buy that sell item than to stick what your menu is. And so you need to be a little bit flexible on yeah. this stuff. And, and a budget doesn't allow you that much flexibility or as much flexibility as where you just change your mindset and start watching where can I save the money? It, it's really not anything to do with a budget. You know, I have this much money to spend this month. Well, if my refrigerator goes out and, and I have a lot of money in the budget part of my car repair, but my car is running fine. What, what's going to happen there? You know, I need that money could be used for the refrigerator, but it's in the car maintenance. So what do I do? And it just gets juggled and, you know, you get frustrated after a while and people give up a lot of times the same way they can't stick to menus. If they get tired when they come home and they don't feel like cooking what's on the menu for the night. So they just give up and then they just totally give up on the budgets period. Yep. So that's why we really we don't, don't budget. push it. Yeah. I have never budgeted mm -mm. ever. Um, squeaky Melissa got all of her Christmas presents for next year, 75% off. You go girl. Wow. Good job. Good job. All the shopping's done. That is a double whammy. Oh my yeah. goodness. Nancy is a CFS. Why you guys are sick so often? I pray for y'all. Well, first of all, thank you for the prayers. Yes. Thank you. Now, yes and no. Our immune systems are compromised, but part of it is I had four or five kids, depending on what time of my life I had four to five kids. So part of it is I had so many kids in schools and stuff. But secondly, since we've had COVID the second time, oh, I've said that word, that thing going around the second time. Uh, we have just been sick constantly, yeah. it seems like. And let's see, we got it last October. No, last December, because grandma was here. Mm -hmm. January. Mm -hmm. We got it in January. So it's been a year. And I would say we have probably been well, maybe... 12 weeks this whole year when we weren't fighting something off. So I'm wondering if it, if it did something to make us more susceptible. I think so. Now, see, I hadn't been sick for eight years until this January when I got the COVID and then I got COVID again in July. And then now this is the first I've had this yeah. sore throat kind of is the first I've had again. So I've been sick twice with the illness and then this yeah. other stuff, flu stuff. Yeah. Um, Foxy says, Jill, 
the $500, the 500 ways I lift off of $500 a month. I was cleaning today and found your book again. <laughs> Good job. I say, uh... Okay. I got to tell you guys, Mike, you're going to have to come over for this one. You're just going to have to come over for this one. What are you? This is my edition of oh, I no. am a Christian, oh. not a doormat. <laughs> Be prepared, Response. Guys. Be prepared. <laughs> I got this email today, and I'm probably going to use it several times. This, the subject from Connie P. Would tell, would tell is, what it is, Penny Pigeon. I know. Oh. The subject is hypocrite is the subject. And it says, I was immediately intrigued by a Pinterest post on Penny Pension Mama, 500 Ways I Lived on $500 a Month ebook. Oh, so this is a new. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to see a sample page or two to see if it was something I can sink my teeth into. However, when you are in debt and trying to save money or spend wisely, when an ebook comes up for $10, seems hypocritical of the of the concept of the site it is important to have things that are free yes i understand that time is money and this is probably a source of income i get it but for me ten dollars is milk tortillas broccoli etc wow all right <clears throat> this is tara's rant let me tell you we have and i emailed her back and told her this we have over almost 1,800 videos on our YouTube channel that are free. We have over 1,500 articles and recipes on our website for free. Free? Pretty much every single thing we talk about that's in our books is for free. And I told her, you are just lazy. Now, Mike had a nicer version, and he was talking about being entitled. I just, I was just going to say, if if I was responding to this lady, I would have said, I think I can tell you right from the beginning what your financial problem is. <laughs> and it's that you're in you have an attitude of entitlement that people need to give you things for free. Because you come to the place where we are, and you you say, oh my, you should be giving this to me for free. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, you know, we could sell this book in a bookstore for 20 or $25, but we're selling it for $10 on the website. And we have all sorts of other free things that you just didn't happen to go look for. <laughs> uh, but then there was something else I was saying, oh yeah. Uh, so the idea that you come with the attitude that we should be giving you something for free um, shows that that entitlement but also if you if the person has a job i would have said um do you want to go to work and not get paid for it how long would you keep working there you don't expect your employer to expect you to work for free so we have a lot of free things so we're supposed to work for free we have a lot of free things but the other thing that I didn't think of to tell her that, or I mean, I didn't respond. This was Tara's responding, but I just told Tara what I, I thought we should say. But the other thing that I've noticed is even when people don't have a lot of money, if people get things for absolutely free, usually people don't appreciate yeah. those things or, or treat them well or use them. Usually like a free thing will be set aside and nobody will ever look at it again. Or I it's think it's not worth as much to them. It appears to not be worth very much. And it's funny because actually we probably would sell more of those books if we upped the price a lot. <laughs> so I just thought that was kind of funny, definitely. <laughs> but I was thinking immediately, my first thought was, this is why you're poor. <laughs> this is exactly why you're poor. Because there's so much about attitude. And I realized, wow, you know what? There were times where we had no money. <clears throat> And things were really, really bad. And in my whole life, I don't remember ever thinking things are bad because um, Bill Gates has money <coughs> and I don't. <coughs> things are really bad. I, I, like, I know that there are a lot of corrupt politicians, but I've never thought my situation is bad because they're doing something to me and I can't control it. My, my thought was always, we're not, I'm not making as much money as I should because I haven't figured out how to do this right. And I was realizing there's like a distinction between people that think 
I'm I'm having struggles because other people are doing it and it's totally out of my control. But I'm sending you this message on the computer that I'm using, on the internet that I'm paying for with a link to my website that I obviously have to pay monthly to have. <laughs> and I just think... <laughs> so Tara's short version is, don't be lazy. <laughs> and what I thought too, I yeah. thought she mentioned tortillas and broccoli. I. I broke down and bought me some tortillas the other day and they're expensive. I'm thinking, why don't you buy a loaf of bread for a dollar? Then the $2 that the tortillas were that I couldn't use quite as much and broccoli. I haven't bought broccoli for a long time. Yeah. You know, it's too expensive. And so I'm thinking this is the way I analyze it. I see, you know, how people aren't thinking how to change their spending habits too, you know, mm -hmm. besides, I was going to say like what Michael said too. She has a computer and time to sit and write out emails like this. When I was trying to work really hard to put food on the table, I didn't have the time to sit at a computer and even look around, let alone, you know, write comments that this long of a comment, you know. Well, when Tara and I had no money, <clears throat> we were thinking, hmm, how can we, Oh, look here. We just saw opportunities everywhere. Like Tara was talking about the dumpster diving earlier, but there were, oh, look, there, there are garden supplies and people throwing them away. Oh, look, somebody set something out on the curb in front of their house with a big free sign. Let's go check it out and see what it is. And we just were finding opportunities. And we, I had a computer that I brought to the marriage and it was an old computer at that time, but we still used that computer in our spare time to think, what can we look for? And what kind of information can we find about how to That's make some how money? The book. How to make some money and improve our situation. <laughs> so it was always a thought of, our thought was always something about what we're doing can improve our situation. And I think that's a mental barrier a lot of people have. But if your thinking is, my situation's bad and it's totally out of my control and there's nothing I can do, then you'll always be where you are. And for most people, you're choosing that. I mean, if you're disabled and and you're, you know, your your brain is not working quite like it should be, then it would make sense that you're disabled and you can't change that. But almost everyone can improve their situation. And that that's the thing that we had the attitude that that was the case. And that's how we've come from where we were to where we are. And that's why we try to tell everybody else that, because we kind of would like everyone to have that experience. You know, yeah, but what, what's interesting is you guys, I get so excited because look at the testimonies that we've gotten tonight <laughs> compared to this one. We have first and I mean, that shows you the, <laughs> the difference in the mental attitude and the you know, people wanting to do things and trying things that it's doable. And she just did not have the right mental attitude at all. And it's all in your attitude because you guys are doing amazing things on here. And so well, I, it's all in the attitude. I would say I, I am pretty impressed and it's encouraging to see when, when some people say in the comments how, you know, they listen to something and they try something and they're super excited because it, something worked. And you know, it's funny. I remember back when we first got married, I didn't know how to do any kind of repairs or fixes or whatever. And one time by kind of an emergency, I had to fix a pipe. And Jill happened to have a faucet thinking mother in law here. <laughs> but I had to make some tools, some MacGyver tools, <laughs> and fix this thing because nobody was going to come do it. And it's funny how when you succeed once at something that you weren't sure you could do or you just learned, it really energizes you to learn more, to do mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. And that'll help you. So, and like I can hear the, that. I can hear that in the tone of our comments. Yeah. Well, when you I know, hear somebody talk get, about it, just, I just paid off something or, uh -huh. or I, I saved this on my grocery bill or I, I cut my grocery bill back this much. Or and, I just figured out, I absolutely love your pie crust recipe. And now yeah. my husband is loving my cooking. Yeah, it's, it's like, yeah, I can hear the excitement. The excitement really is cool. just unbelievable. That's, that's why we keep doing this. <laughs> <laughs> it's your like, positive comments that keep us going. going. <laughs> Let me tell you, by the way, oh. thank you for all the Christmas cards. If you missed oh, yes, yeah, Christmas, guys. thank yeah, you. Thank you so all of the positive much. comments. I mean, we had a stack. Thank you. So you guys Barb, are so amazing. I was just amazing. looking at yours this morning. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. I was looking. Yeah. And you guys, it's funny <sighs> because 
it means a lot because you actually listen to what we're hearing. The, the gifts you send are so appropriate, you know, and just perfect for each Mom one has of enough us. Ritz crackers to last until she's dead. <laughs> Did you get the next so, uh, so she's really she's really set on the Ritz crackers. Yeah, you guys <laughs> listen and you're and so I, sweet. You're just so sweet uh, doing that. <laughs> and I am, don't have enough gnomes. No, <laughs> listen to her. <laughs> well, you want to send more gnomes? No. Just <laughs> only kidding. Well, I really don't. Mm. But I'm only kidding. <laughs> Mike got me two more yesterday <laughs> for Christmas. Uh, <coughs> he found him at a Christmas clearance. Um, okay. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, sorry, I'm losing my voice here. Uh, okay. All right. Let me look through these. Cam says she makes a good habit to invest in our cookbooks and planner to get the new year started off right. Guys, if you want to save money, I'm telling you, every you will save <clears throat> every time you go to the grocery store. And I am shocked at the number of people who email me and they say, I went to the grocery store the first time. And I saved $200. I went to the grocery store the first time. I saved $300. I went to the grocery store the, the first time. I saved $400. People save all the time. We, we had the people tips. say just the uh, leftover index. They said, that saved me more money just using the leftover index yeah. in there. So 35% off right now. All of our cookbooks, our planners are not on sale because we haven't printed here in the U.S. So we don't have as big of a profit that we could put them on sale. But... I only had 30 left at the beginning of the show. These are our undated yearly planners. And um, I'm putting in another order, but we are almost out if you want them for the new year. Yes, dear. Um, okay. And um, remember the birthday gift I left at home when I saw you? They're gnomes, my friend. Give me. <laughs> Oh my goodness. My friend Kimmy, she's in her apron. We love her. Um, she got me a birthday gift and she was supposed to bring it in September when we had a mutual uh, YouTube conference together and she forgot it. <laughs> and of course, she's too cheap to mail it. Good for her. Way to go, Kimmy. Good for her. Don't mail it. She's waiting for us to come to Utah uh. to see her, which is fine. Good for her. <laughs> Oh, that's uh, funny. And Diana says our pancakes are so much better than she ever made. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> okay, let me look at the next batch of questions here, guys. We can't get to every single thing, but um, uh, let me just look here while the next questions are coming in. Did you take art lessons? Karen wants to... <laughs> No, I just watch YouTube videos or look at something else that I like. Like in October, uh, Home Depot had um, Home Depot had uh, pillows, and I took some pictures of the pillows, and then I painted those. Or I do tutorials on. Um, it's it's so weird. She YouTube. didn't even paint with watercolors when she was little. I mean, her brother draws. He does. I hated art. Yeah. I she, hated art. Art was not her thing. And her brother loves art. You know, yeah, he does a lot of art funny. stuff. And all of a sudden we move here and she said, look what I painted. I thought, where did that come from? <laughs> I know. I know. That's uh, weird. I don't know. It's that was weird. funny. What's funny is my editor in the Philippines, I was talking to him and I sent him my paintings. He's like, oh, those are really good. He said, I do painting too. I'm like, dude, stop editing for me and start your own YouTube channel. He is good. I mean, he's, I got to show you guys this. He is like really good. And I was like, dude, you need to stop editing for me and make your own YouTube channel. Let me show you. Hold on real set. Just one sec here. Let me go back through all of my Facebook messages with him. Uh, and by the way, for those of you who think you have high grocery prices in the Philippines, it costs ten dollars for a pound of onions and they make ten to eleven dollars a day mm -hmm. stop your whining <laughs> okay so here are some of his drawings look at this there's one he said that he wanted to do a family picture for us i mean i'm like dude these are really really good 
And then look at his painting. Hold on just a second. Oops, just a second. Oh, ah, uh, oh, seriously. Oh, seriously. Uh, hold on just a second. I got to go back now. I know none of you guys probably really care about this. But now, oh why my goodness, looking? I was totally shocked. Looking? Look at that. That's unreal. I was like, dude. I hadn't seen that. That is something. Stop wow. working for me. Make your own YouTube channel. My and if it's goodness. a matter of supplies, I told them they have these little mini rock painting things that they do. I want to do rock painting. I think that would be cool. <laughs> She's laughing at me. See? See why I tell my mother I nothing. Try, I try to encourage I talk my, to my children mother. as most as best as I you can. You witnessed there it. Sometimes it's you just a witnessed crack of what the ideas they come up with. <laughs> you witnessed what my uh, mother. Now, one thing too, think of this. Tara is painting on windows that you paid a dollar for, which is not and bad. probably 20 cents worth of paint. Yeah. So, you know, she doesn't have a whole lot <clears throat> invested in this a lot of times. She did get some canvases and paints for Christmas. From Dollar Tree. And she got some from Dollar Tree. But, you know, you can do this stuff, whether whatever hobby it is, look for ways that you can do this, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Oh, somebody asked if I'm going to be selling them, and I never answered her question. Oh. Um, no, I probably probably not. I looked it up, and people who do that, like the big ones like that, they like my big, great big pumpkin one that I showed you guys, $350 on oh Etsy for those. It, well, not, why, not including shipping. Why don't we no, quit this no. business and you just start painting to support us? I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, did we write the planners yourselves? Yes. So I wrote this planner based on a planner that mom had from the 70s and um, combined it with things that I found helpful and then put it all together. And I know I haven't done the video. I'm sorry. There's a video on there, though, explaining the 2022 one, I think. And it's the same planner. It just doesn't have dates. We undated it so we can sell it all year round because people were begging us to keep it in stock all year round. And so now we have it all year round just as undated. Elizabeth says, A River Runs Through It is the movie from Livingston, yeah. Montana. Yes, you are right. I love that movie. I don't know why. I don't even remember what it was. All I remember was the movie and I thought I want to live there. <laughs> um, Mandy says she cleaned the fridge completely off and wiped it down and her 14-year-old noticed within five minutes. Very, yeah, see, yeah, what she, why she's saying that is we were talking about how much your kids mm -hmm. will notice this stuff. And it means a lot to kids to have a yeah. home that's organized and clean. We had several adults comment on that video saying how their chaotic lives growing up in such unorganized houses made them not want to have kids. Because they didn't want to put their kids through what they had been through Because as of the kids. stress and chaos from having a dirty, messy, unorganized house. Yeah. It makes a difference, guys. It really does. Jeannie says, I saved $56 on bacon yesterday, not oh, counting the other stuff. Goodness. Just on bacon. You go, girl. Very good. See, you, lo you listen to us. I know. We Our viewers it. are so unbelievable. And then she takes that $56 and she turns around and buys me gnomes. <laughs> which i do appreciate <laughs> that's too funny but she can do that because she saved on there see that's the way it works anyone have any experience with mold on a mattress Ooh. the only thing i could say is maybe bleach it or a steamer you know maybe sometimes maybe a use steam steamer might, for yeah. bed bugs but i don't know you might have to call like a carpet cleaning place yeah and see if they could do something but some like of that. those things could get so expensive in and of themselves might well you might them. just get yeah. a new mattress yeah that's one of those things that may just have yeah. to Doodle Tooth says, still have to brag about your pie crust. It is the best. I'm telling you, it is the best pie crust you will ever eat. <laughs> I hate pie crust, and I will eat mom's pie crust recipe. So uh, what years are stove? I don't know. I'm assuming the 50s somewhere, but I don't know. Yeah, I think I got it at a garage 50s. sale for 50 bucks. So anyway, um, Julia says we're a breath of fresh air. <laughs> At least she didn't say we were full of hot <gasps> air. Janet says Hobby Lobby has 90% off. <gasps> oh, maybe we need to go to Casper. 
goodness. We or Billings have, or both. We don't have or Gillette. a Hobby Lobby, Let's so see. you're tormenting us. Casper is two hours <laughs> south. Billings is two hours north, and Gillette is two hours east. We could make a great big circle. Circle to hit all the Hobby Lobbies, huh? <laughs> Um, Connie, yes, you can use chia seeds instead of eggs. That works really well. Also, chai seeds. Did you chia? Teach? Oh, chia. Yeah, you know, like I don't have the my glasses Bob Ross on. head. You know, I the shouldn't big... even look because I don't have my chia, glasses. Chia, chia. Remember the commercial? <laughs> I, I always wanted one of those things. You never got me one. Oh. I feel deprived as a child. <laughs> Gail says I will have saved seven hundred dollars this month, so she's buying the cookbooks today. You go, girl. Very I don't good. know what you saved it on, but good job. Wow. <coughs> Francis, I'm following Jill. We'll only spend $25 for groceries in a week. Very good. She has quite a spot <coughs> pile. Very good. Good job. Mm hmm Because it's hard to do to get down that low, you know, but you can do it. It's doable, but you have to. Look at me. Me? Yeah, look at me. Why? Micheline says, I love your how your mom looks at you. So much love and tenderness conveyed in her gift. <laughs> oh, mom! Oh. oh, yeah, right. My affectionate daughter. <laughs> Tara, Michael's over there laughing Mike, when I you say, know, you say my effect. Tara just is not the type of touchy-feely really yeah. person. You know, when she was a baby... My first baby, I thought she was going to cuddle and snuggle. She just would rear back. She didn't want to be cuddled or snuggled, even when she was a baby, even though I tried very hard. And I'm her sorry. brother's just the opposite. When he was a baby, he would just snuggle into you, you know, and he just loved it. Now, he's he's not quite as much either. But um, her, my husband's side of the family, they're, <coughs> none of them are very affectionate. <laughs> I was lucky in my Explains husband that he was willing to change, but... <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> oh my goodness, I could go down a rabbit trail on that one. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay. Well, thank you, mother. Did I love you? Me in spite of, <laughs> in spite of yourself. Um. <laughs> during the de Susan wants to know during the demo, are we using our downstairs kitchen? We need a kitchen room. All I'm not sure what to do for cooking during it. So I don't know if we actually are or not. I might just use the kitchen table. And I might I, just do it in the kitchen table. It depends on when they take out the sinks, I guess, is going to be the big one. have to play it by ear. We have everything but an oven downstairs. We have a refrigerator, a microwave, and a sink downstairs. So it might be easier just to go downstairs. But I don't like going up and down the stairs. Yeah, it's hard. I've already fallen probably six times down my stairs. Especially so if she was carrying anything up and down. I don't want to break my <laughs> neck going up and down so much. So I'm like... Probably just do it on the kitchen table. I, I, I used a kitchen table for about six months when I didn't have a kitchen one time. So, and it, it was doable. Well, I have a modern kitchen. No, not really. Mm -mm. It's more no. country feeling. No, I am going to show, I'm going to, on my first video that I do probably next week. It'll have to be next week. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> You do not understand the gravity of the situation here. <laughs> I still don't have plans. So I was going to reuse my kitchen cabinets. And I got some kitchen plans from Mark Tobin Kitchen Design. Go check them on YouTube. Love them. Loved my plans. But when I went to go have the contractor do it, I started realizing there were things like doors in the way <laughs> that would cause major issues. So... I called somebody here in town. They, he came in, measured everything, put it all in the computer, realized he could not. I was going to reuse the kitchen cabinets I already have because I don't want to spend $20,000 on kitchen cabinets. So I'm going to reuse and paint the really super expensive kitchen cabinets I have. And um, he could not get matching cabinets for He wasn't a supplier for that company. So he sent me to another place. Found out they couldn't do it. So now he's got the third place. And I was supposed to meet her today and she got sick. So I said, can you day quill yourself up at 830 tomorrow morning? <laughs> Get my drawings done so I can figure this out. Because Monday, they're going to start tearing everything out. So I have to get some plants and we still haven't ordered a stove. Tomorrow's stoves are supposed to go on sale at Home Depot, they said. 
So we're going to try again to order a stove and we're trying to decide if we want a new refrigerator or not. But when my children got married, as they stood up mm. to say their wedding vows, I pretty much said, will you please promise and vow never to remodel anything? It didn't work. My son, the first house he bought was one of these old clunkers that he had to totally gut and everything. And I keep telling them, do not remodel a house. Do not remodel a house. And what is my daughter doing next week? So we feel like we're on a plane headed straight down and we haven't even started yet. <laughs> well, and what I can't figure out is the contractor, he's coming on Monday. I have no countertops ordered, no cabinets ordered, no appliances ordered because I can't until he tears everything out and rearranges the cabinets. And then they have to measure for the countertops. And now when you order stuff, it can take up to six months to get one yeah. item. Everybody's telling us six to eight weeks. And for our big window, we want to put in there saying six months. So we're looking at this being a nightmare. Long process. I know I'm being negative, but you got to realize I spent over 20 years. 12 weeks. Yeah, but you guys did it all yourself. Yeah, we did. So that was part of the problem. And you had no money to do it either. But still, I actually have the cash on hand in my bank account. Remodeling is a hard, yes. long process. Yes. Yeah, from the window place. Yeah, I'm going to talk to them tomorrow too. Well, at so. least it'll be warm when you have to put it in then. Yeah, <laughs> it's a positive part. Well, we of were it. supposed to get the window put in like two months ago, and we didn't get it put in because Mike was going to do it. So we haven't got it done yet, but we're but we're still trying. But I can't do anything until I get the cabinet plans. So we can't put in the window until we know the measurement of the countertop to make sure the window's centered right. That's what usually happens. So it's yeah. all a big domino that's just falling apart, and it hasn't even started yet. <laughs> so anyway, Montana Mama, to the previous buyers, are the books helpful? So if you guys are dining on a dime cookbooks, Montana Mom, she wants to know, are they actually helpful? 35% off right now. You guys let her know in the comments if they are. And um, let's see. So um, yeah, so I literally Monday... No. Literally last Thursday, almost had a complete breakdown because I was like, what am I supposed to do with these cabinets? And then it came to me, why don't I just go to a cabinet place in town? I don't know why I didn't think of that in the first place. So I went to, there's like three or four cabinet places in town. And so I went and talked to him and he's like, oh yeah, sure I can do it. I've spent all this time going around in my brain trying to figure it out because we're trying to use the same cabinets and get them moved. And so, but some of the cabinets are from Satan. I don't know why people, it's men, design these cabinets. Men and actually, <laughs> I'm kind of glad. No offense, Luke, you did great. And I think you would have probably done a good job. But the lady that I'm going to tomorrow, hopefully, She's a lady. Yeah, ladies tend so to. I hope <laughs> she can understand what I'm saying really well. And she it, actually it does make a difference. My daughter and I, Law and I, went into a model home one time just to look. And we could not believe how perfect this kitchen was. The whole layout of the house was unbelievable. And the gal that was showing us around, I said, who <coughs> designed this? I'd never seen a model home in a housing area so perfectly designed and usable you know she said i did and i thought that says it all you know when a woman just for some reason knows especially for a kitchen what needs to be you know yeah. done yeah and right now i'm kind of stuck on do i keep two sinks or just one i'm kind of stuck on that for the moment also so uh oh dear becky says one channel she watches it took almost a year to get her new kitchen mm-hmm you need to and another channel, it's still waiting for the groundbreaking for their addition. Please don't tell me that. Yeah, that's I always say at least double the money and double the time that you had planned. If you plan six months, it's going to take a year. If it's you plan ten thousand dollars, it's going to take twenty. Oh, minimum. I'm trying not to have a panic attack. <laughs> 
Although I got the colors picked out, we did get, and yeah, that was did. actually pretty simple. We did get the colors picked we out. Yes, and I'm very thankful. We, don't think I'm not thankful we have another kitchen. I do. Yeah, My only big thing make it a little is bit easier. going up and down the stairs to deal with the kitchen all the time. That's the only yeah. thing for me. Um, but. Uh, well, you may have to buy new clothes because you'll lose a lot true. more weight. Um, if you're, if you're wrapping it up, I didn't send these, but Philomena said, how do you keep the avocados? You were talking I don't, about. I don't, how, so how do we keep avocados? Actually, that video is coming Friday. So if you want to see how I'm keeping avocados, but basically what I did was I froze them. And you'll see how I did that. But yes, mm -hmm. I processed almost 100. I mean, we ate a few, so I probably processed 90 avocados. And um, we did that. And... There was one other thing. Oops, there was one other thing I was gonna say on the kitchen. What was it? Um, I got the colors picked up, but you know what? I forgot about my 115 tiles. And I'm gonna have to have a little chat with Brad at the restore about this. Every single tile has a price sticker on it. So you have to get the price off. We have to get, the, but you so, love picking off so stickers. You 115. Love, you love picking off stickers. <laughs> this will be a fun job for so you. So I saved a hundred dollars on tie. No, I saved. Yeah. I saved a hundred dollars buying the tile at the restore, but now I got to pick all the stickers off. <laughs> for you guys, a good tip is get a wet <coughs> rag and just lay it on top of the sticker. Actually, I found a better tip. And let it sit. What's that? They said use a blow dryer or a heat gun. Oh, that would be good too. Yeah. So I'm going to try that and I'll let you guys yeah, know if it works. That would work too. But yeah. I always, I don't want to stand there with a the blow dryer. So I would just yeah. put the rag on and walk away and do something else. But that would be a good yeah. idea too. Well, you can't do that with 115. It would take me two years to do it. Well, if you if did I one every also... hour, that would only take you a week. <laughs> That's a lot. I know. Uh, All right, what? Oh, people, people answering the question about but the book being good. Oh, oh, okay. Anybody, oh, anybody the co anybody? okay. The um, comments on whether the they comments like are. Uh, oh, except now I can't see them. I have volume one and two. Use them regularly. Kelly says. Judy says I have both volume one and two, and I use them both. Uh, Mary Beth says, are you kidding me? Yes. With exclamation <laughs> part marks. Point part. No, what's it called? Exclamation point marks. Yeah. Exclamation marks. Yeah. Yeah. That didn't sound right when it came out of my mouth. Susan says, yes, with, with a, a whole bunch of exclamation. exclamation marks. Um, take care. Take pictures of the before kitchen. I will. And you guys are going to die when you. S <gasps> I just realized something. Oh my goodness. As I d do, Mike and mom just realized what I realized. No. Mm -mm. I'll keep it a surprise for you oh, guys. Great. I just looked at something and I just realized something. It's the same color as in here. <laughs> it's the same color as you have. It's the color she picks out for every kitchen for the past 25 years, I think. Oh my it's the same color. Green. <laughs> and I just don't let it go. Do and the I? gold. And the gold. Yeah. Green, gold, and white. Exact colors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Same color she had in her old house. Oh, my goodness. So now you guys know the colors it's going to be. <laughs> I totally forgot I put the gold in here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my now goodness. Now, this is me commenting on the book, but we have had... This surprised me, too, when we came out with the book. We have so many people say, I have a huge cookbook collection, like hundreds of cookbooks. And they say, yours is the only one I use. And I know that's coming from us, and you're wanting some of the viewers to say that. But we've had a lot of viewers in the past say that, that they use our book. You know, that's the one they keep out to use on a daily basis. But were there any more? <laughs> um. Oh, Jeannie, don't tell me no, this. Jeannie okay. says it took me six months and $23,000 to finish. Our, and I'm not getting cabinets, and that's what they're estimating. I know. I'm not getting cabinets, and that's what they're estimating. 
Took us six months and $23,000 to finish our kitchen and the carpenter messed it around half the time. 15 years later, it's still beautiful. <laughs> Is that a comfort or a warning? <laughs> wow. Oh dear. Elizabeth, are you replacing your appliances? Yes. And what are we replacing them with? Well, first of all, I'm going to have Pistol, our appliance guy on to talk about appliances, but basically get the thing with the less bells and whistles you can, because that's less to break. And honestly, for a refrigerator, what I want is refrigerator on top and freezer on the bottom with no ice maker, is what I'm really wanting. So that's what we're trying to decide. Um, because but the less know. stuff you have on any appliance, the less to go wrong. Yeah. And we've had more appliance people pistol too but more appliance people always say that yeah um yeah so anyway diane and i'm cookbooks guys 35 percent off right now all of our cookbooks including our volume one volume two and our gluten-free dairy-free and we these are not on sale but we have our updated undated yearly planners on not on sale, but for sale. These are made in America. I only had 30 left at the beginning of the show. I don't know how many I have left right now. 50% off all of our eBooks right now for you guys. And um, <clears throat> uh, let me see. What? Do, let's see. I was going to tell you real quick. Is there any last questions? Um why is this not coming up? I was going to have Mike look. Okay. Well, never mind. I can't figure out how many. Oh, wait here. How many planners we have left? Um, <clears throat> let's see. What do we got? Well, anyway. Okay. So that is what we have left. <coughs> Just Vicky says we took out a wall and added many new cabinets. It was crazy. Memories that Christmas before we tore out the wall, we let our niece draw on the Christmas tree on the wall. Oh, that's funny. That's cute. That's cute. Yeah. See, we had thought about um, we had thought about moving the wall to fit the refrigerator in the corner, so that we could have the refrigerator in the corner because the refrigerator is right in the middle of the kitchen, and I hate it there. But oh, uh, okay. Oh, something's wrong. Okay. okay. Well, I don't know. Something's off count with our planners, but we'll go look at it and see. And um, La Diana says the granola recipe in my Dine on a Dime cookbook is the dirtiest. I don't know what that means. Is that good? I hope that's good. <laughs> Everybody says the granola Everybody good. likes the granola ones. So <laughs> I hope that's I think good. It's a good thing. Uh, Frances says she has the same thing for a refrigerator. Yeah, grandma had one. I can't do a top refrigerator. I can't do a top freezer and a bottom refrigerator because I fell when David was a baby and it hurts me to bend over to get in the refrigerator like that. So I can't do that. I mean, of course I would if I had to, but I don't have to. That's why we're saving cash to do this. So are you doing any renovations, mother? Am I doing renovations? No, I'm not. <clears throat> I'm just trying to unpack. Well, they could spray your cabinets when they're doing mine. I know. I want to paint my cabinets so bad. Well, why don't you have them spray them while you do mine? You could do that. It's the same color. Green? No, the white. The white. You could tack that on. We could tack that tack on. on. Just why thing. not? The list. <laughs> so, uh, Shannon says, we've been remodeling a house we own for five years. My husband says he wants to build us house. I don't know how to nicely tell him I would <laughs> like to live in it before I'm dead. 20 years they spent, mom and dad spent. And it still wasn't done when I finally <laughs> sold the house. I still, we had half of it not done. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, livingonadime.com. Thank you for joining us. We're going to be live tomorrow, probably around noon. I got a couple appointments tomorrow. I got to work it in between. And we're going to be talking about saving on groceries some more. Livingonadime.com. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye, guys. We'll see you guys next time.